Welcome back, Russia, to yet another edition of Physics at Home. As always, here are your starters for 10. Number one, how do you show an object moving backwards on a velocity time graph? Number two, what does an acceleration of minus 10 meters per second squared tell us about the object in question? Number three, vectors show both what and what. And finally, all the way back from P4, can you name the three types of nuclear radiation? As always, pause, have a go, and continue when ready. Looking at the answers, to show uh, an object reversing, you need to have a line which is beneath the x-axis. So anything above the x-axis is positive on a velocity time graph, which means you're moving forward. Anything below the x-axis shows a negative speed and therefore reversing. The minus 10, again, tells us that an object is slowing down. Okay, it's the rate of change of speed. Factors show both size or magnitude and direction. And our three types of nuclear radiation are alpha, beta, and gamma. In today's short lesson, we'll take a look at contact and non-contact forces by reminding ourselves of the definition of a force, identifying examples of both, and describing the conditions for each type of force. So looking at that definition, a force is a push or pull acting on an object as it interacts with another one. And we can class all forces into two groups of contact and non-contact. A contact force is one which acts at a point of contact between two objects, i.e. they must be touching for the force to exist. Non-contact forces, by contrast, are ones which can act at a distance. So the photos on the right show three examples. So the first example we'll look at is friction. In the top picture, you can see some friction welding of titanium. This is actually a slow down image. The real one is much faster. And those forces are enough to cause a heating effect and eventually the two pieces of metal to weld together. In a low friction environment, you have no grip and you'll slip all over the place. Again, clearly contact forces at work there. For air resistance, common misconception among some students would be that it is a non-contact force. This is incorrect. So, if it is a contact force, well, what are we in contact with? Since air is invisible, let's visualize it using the images on the left. So the one on the bottom is showing airflow over a car in a wind tunnel using colored balls to represent particles. So when we are moving through the air, we bump into air particles all the time. It's the impact from each of these small particles that causes the resistive force. Air resistance is proportional to speed, so faster equals more air resistance. And again, this is a contact force. Just for randomness, you can't put anything in a wind tunnel. Moving on, gravitational force is an attractive force which exists between all objects which have the quantity of mass. So be that the computer or phone you're watching this on, a pen, a person, a country, an entire planet. If it has mass, it experiences the attraction of gravity. And Newton's laws that we'll look at in subsequent chapters are all based upon this non-contact force. Tension, such as the tension in this rope here, is 
clearly a contact force. Without pulling on the rope, there will be no tension involved. Electrostatic forces are caused by electric charges. They are non-contact by their nature. As with all non-contact forces, the closer you are, the stronger the force becomes. Whether that's bending water, as in the picture in the bottom right, or taking a can for a walk. So it's not magnetism pulling that, it's an aluminium can, which is not a magnetic metal. It is being dragged along by an electrostatic force from the tube the gentleman is holding. The normal contact force, or sometimes called simply a reaction force, acts when two objects are in contact with each other. So for example, in the top image, if the box is not on the table, there is no force between the two. As soon as the box rests upon the table, the weight of the box acts downward, and because the table is solid, it exerts an equal and opposite force perpendicular to the surface in contact. Pushing on a wall has a similar effect. If the size of the reaction force is too small, this means that your object is not solid enough and you will accelerate and you will fall through the wall, for example if it was made of paper, or crash through the table. If you overload it. Magnetism, again another non-contact force, an invisible field but clearly visible effects. So to summarize, can you put each of these into the correct category? Pause the video, have a go, we'll check together. Please note that the normal contact force is called that, again, because of the angle it makes with the surface. So for a table, that force will be at right angles to the table surface. On the next couple of slides, you could try to categorize each force, draw a picture, and briefly explain using the information on the previous slides. <coughs> Always three. So, for apply to demonstrate in this lesson, can you describe the meaning of a contact and non-contact force? Can you provide three examples of each? And if I sat on the table, what would the reaction force of the table be so that it doesn't break? Thank you, and we look forward to having you back for next time.